every single upgrade that you see for 2025 on this uh, X1 that I'm gonna show you behind me is now available free of cost to every Gen 2 owner. Morning, welcome to Patriot HQ, right here on the Gold Coast, the home of Patriot Campus, the manufacturing plant, and our very recent retail showroom. Behind me, I've actually got the first of the MY25 model Gen 2 X range uh, that's actually come off the production line yesterday. And I thought I'd take this opportunity really to run everybody through what's changing for MY25, because on the surface, we're actually not changing anything, yeah? I think for the people who, who don't know, if you're looking at an MY24 model Gen 2 or MY25, you're not gonna see on the surface a lot of changes, but behind the scenes, we have been working very, very hard over the past uh, 12 months on really refining uh, the design of Gen 2, because Gen 2's only been around for 12 months. We've just gone past that one year anniversary of Gen 2, and it took us 10 years with the Gen 1 models to get them to the place where in my opinion, they were absolutely perfect. All of the little incidentals, all the little, I suppose, frustrations and the improvements in the design were ironed out over a 10 year period. And I'm extremely proud to say, you know, my team, my engineering teams here at uh, Patriot Campus, we've been very heavily focused over the past 12 months, probably more than we ever have in the past of really listening to our customers and getting the customer feedback on the things that that they would like to see changed or improved in the product. Now, when it goes back to the launch of Gen 2, I personally did about 25,000 kilometers in those first pre-production units. And to me, I was, I was absolutely blown away with a whole new concept on, on how the engineering team and obviously the production teams here at Patriot Campers pieced that, that product together. I came back uh, from a lot of those trips with lists that I've never seen before in the past, if you remember Camper Trailer of the Year with uh, Gen 1, the one thing that blew the judges away every year, hundreds and hundreds of changes because we were still a very immature business at that time, you know? It was very reliant of the input of me, but now I have people that have been with me for a long time that understand the demands of what our products uh, go through and, you know, really designing something that's fit for purpose. So those, these past 12 months have been amazing here at Patriot as far as the refinements of the design go. Going back to really listening to the customers, I think a big advantage for us now, it's been a long time since we've actually been in retail sales uh, as part of the, the, the business and having a service department back at Patriot HQ now for the past seven or eight months has really brought us back in touch with the customers more than we ever have been in the past. And we have a great relationship with our production engineering team and our service department at Patriot HQ that we have that consistent loop of feedback uh, coming in that we can create the buckets of, of issues that customers are having consistently and then we can prioritise uh, the changes because to make a change, it's not as simple as it was in the early days. It's not as simple as walking out into the factory and talking to one of our five or 10 staff at that time and making a quick reaction. Now we're, you know, we're ISO certified, we're documented. We have to go through a massive, massive change. There's a lot of chinks in that chain now at Patriot Campus to make those changes. It takes longer than even I would like and sometimes it takes longer than the customers would like. You know, I, I have this saying, you know, uh, internally here, whilst Toyota, have a warranty department, so will Patriot Campers. You know, we are still Australian made, we are still a family business, and we are still handcrafted. But the fundamentals of the continuous improvement through specifically the production engineering team, through that feedback loop um, from Patriot HQ has just been amazing and something that I'm really, really proud of on the changes that I'm gonna show you guys today that are now rolling through on every X range of Patriot Camper. Another thing that I'm probably even more proud of to say is we're gonna make every single one of these changes available to existing Gen 2 owners at absolutely no cost. So if you can get into Patriot HQ on the Gold Coast or to our Las Vegas store for our US customers, um, we will fit all of these changes free of charge, but we've also developed these changes as retrofit kits. So if you're handy with a drill and a pop rivet gun, we can send you out these with full work instructions. We want Patriot customers to experience everything you see, me and my family experience on Patriot Games. So as a business, I think we're really proud to announce that, getting all the upgrades on a, on a brand new model. It's probably something that you wouldn't get out of any other manufacturer, but we feel that feedback is warranted from the customers. It's those existing customers that have already invested into our brand 
that help us achieve the pinnacle of what we want of the improvement of the products, if that makes sense. And it's obviously at the customer's choice. There are some changes here that you might see value in and you might want to improve um, your existing Gen 2. There might be some that you're happy with um, where your trailer's at and you might not want to fit them. You don't have to do any of this, but if you do want to get any of these upgrades done, then uh, we're more than happy to work with you, which is, um, which is really cool. So let's get into these changes here. Uh, I'll run you through in a step-by-step, -step, and then at the end of the video, uh, I'll give you guys some information on how you can get your trailer upgraded to fundamentally an M MY25 model. The first change I'm gonna show you is probably the simplest, but could make one of the biggest impacts. We've actually, you can see on the back here, we've installed uh, dust covers uh, over the top of the switches. Now the switches, the door operation switches with the LEDs are IP rated, but they're not IP rated to a standard of say pressure washer ingress, which is what we've kind of, our research is showing us that might be causing a lot of the problem and I'm responsible for it, I do it too, right? I'll get home for a trip, I'll get the gurney out and gurney in the switch. But what happens is if there's any fine dust sitting around the switch, that dust will then obviously get pushed inside of the switch. And at some stage down the track, the switch could potentially jam. Now we've only seen a very, very small volume of this happen, but once again, it's that continuous improvement to ensure if one or two customers go through it, we don't want to see any more go through it. The switch is the right application for this product, but again, if it does get jammed on, it can cause problems down the line throughout the rest of the electrical system. So very, very simple solution. Keep the dust cap on when you're in dusty conditions. Don't pressure watch, uh, wash the switches, and I will touch on a couple of things here that you guys probably would have heard at handover, but during a handover, we know that process can be overwhelming for some customers, and there are some things that get missed. Very simple install, something you can do at home with one tool. This one here is a, look, we do have, I'm gonna use the word user error, and I know customers don't like me using that word, but it's typically not caused by the owner of the camper trailer. It's typically caused by one of the kids uh, or somebody who doesn't really understand how your trailer operates. The big thing that you need to do when, you, um, when you're closing a door on any of the Patriot uh, campers with the electronic latches is when you close that door, and customers will know this from handover, you always latch both sides. So you make sure that one side's pushed in, then you make sure the other side is clicked in. In some instances, we have seen door latches fail and the failure is being caused by the striker uh, not being perfectly engaged. So if you can see here, um, as, look, as simple as it sounds, it's really giving the opportunity for the functionality to be known and stand out by anybody who's operating the trailer. And you would have seen through the ST5 launch, that's something I'm really big on. I'm really big on labels. I'm really big on intuitive operation of all of our products. So that's something that you can do with your kids. Um, the stickers just come in a pack, obviously for a graphite trailer, uh, a white set will come in the pack. For a white trailer, a black set comes on the pack. These are actually pre-production units. They have a little push logo underneath there and just ensures that if you're not the one closing the door, if it's one of your mates or one of your kids, it's just one of those little reminders to ensure that you're pushing on both sides and ensuring you're getting the striker latched in and that'll uh, ensure that the rubber seal is doing its job. This one here, I've been absolutely forced um, to get this one in and we need to consistently remind everybody who has dust ingress issues. The number one cause of dust ingress, I'm really sorry to say, is user error. It, it, it genuinely is, and I cannot count the amount of times that we have customers that do turn up here that are extremely disgruntled about, you know, they've been up to Cape York or they've been across the Simpson and they've been in that really fine stuff and my trailer leaks dust. When did you last clean the air filter? What air filter? That's the response that I get. It's something that I've been working really hard with my sales team, um, but now it's gotten to the point that I just, I wanna get, and look, I'm responsible as well. I do forget every now and again as well. But one of the, you'll see on, when we're traveling on Patriot Games, you'll see there is a lot of preventative maintenance that happens with my whole convoy behind the scenes. And I think this is something that maybe a lot of people are not really prepared for when they get into really remote destination traveling. 
And it's the same for the trailer, it's the same for the vehicles, it's the same for all of the gear that we take with us. We have a, a routine um, when, we're, when we're doing extreme remote stuff and doing severe, you know, vibration, corrugation is the stuff that really destroys our products, cars and trailers. It's not so much that real slow, you know, rock crawling off-roading stuff. It's the big corrugated long stints on the roads. We have a maintenance routine that when we get to camp every afternoon, there's a list of about five things that need to be done uh, on all of the vehicles and all of the trailers before anybody gets set up for camp or settles into camp. And now it's really the job of Christian and Ashton. We always carry a torque wrench with us. I can't count the amount of times in my uh, career of, of off-road touring that I've snapped wheel studs on vehicles not trailers. I've never snapped the wheel studs on a camper trailer. Uh, I have broken a stub axle in Mongolia, uh, but cars, I've lost a lot of wheels on cars. We ride really heavy in the 79s and even my old uh, converted 200 series, I think I snapped about three or four uh, wheels off that off one particular vehicle because the thing was so heavily loaded. So going around talking up uh, all the wheel nuts, air filters, Air filters in vehicles seems to be something that everybody does uh, very routinely, but they disregard the trailer. Now, the, the best way to put this into perspective, if your tow vehicle was sitting up the ass of another tow vehicle for a thousand kilometers of dusty corrugated road, would you clean the air filter when you pulled up to camp? Well, I think 99% of people are gonna answer yes. Well, that is what your trailer is subjected to every day consistently every day your trailer's going through that it's sitting in a dust cloud behind your tow vehicle hence the reason why you've heard me say over the years there is no 100 percent fix for dust ingress in a towable it does not exist no manufacturer can claim that but we all do do our best to ensure that we minimize dust impact now that's what the PCOR filters are designed to do and they work. They, they definitively work. They force fresh air into the trailer and they pressurize the inside of the trailer. So as dust is attacking your seals from the outside, that pressurized air is pushing against it and fighting it back out. When that air filter gets clogged, it can't do its job. So I've taken the liberty of actually for the production models, this is a little bit smaller, so it's it's a little bit nicer to look at than this big sign uh, that's on the sign. Uh, but I can't stress it enough. Dust ingress issues are avoidable. Another big tip that I give uh, to everyone, if you've ever done a handover with me, uh, you'd know this one, carry a tub of Vaseline with you. Yeah, um, just a you know one of those round tubs of Vaseline. If you're in that real silty, and I'm only talking in circumstantially in a couple of days maybe of a trip, on gravel dusty roads, you don't need to do this, but in that real fine stuff, just put a really thin smear around the outside of the seal and you will be absolutely amazed on how it creates another barrier uh, for dust ingress. Um, so that one there is very, very simple one, but a very important one. A real big one uh, is the kitchen slides. We have now, the kitchen slide retrofit has been out for, I wanna say about three months now. Um, we've completed a lot of these. We're really getting through them. All of my testing, Flinders Ranges, High Country, back up the Cape, Simpson Desert. I still have my original Gen 2, the first draw slide in one of my trailers and I've never had a problem with it, but we are seeing a lot of customers that are having issues with the, the first run of Gen 2 draw slides. So like I said, this has now been in, on the production line for a couple of months. So if you have an early model Gen 2, we're gonna get everybody in and we're gonna refit. We're going back to the Gen 1 kitchen slide setup. Doesn't change any of the operation with your kitchen. All of your fridge slide, all of your sink me mechanism, um, your pop-up bench top, uh, all of that, remains exactly the same. It's aesthetically, it looks a little bit different. You can see we've got a much heavier slide there. Locking, ball bearings. This was one of those products that it ain't, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. We were trying to achieve weight savings and that was the driver. These draw slides are extremely heavy, but I cannot recall in the 10 years of Gen 1 ever uh, replacing under warranty a kitchen in a Patriot camper. I don't think it ever happened once and they, they get subject to a little bit of pounding. You know, I've had nights where, you know, 
the campfire's going, everyone's having a good time and friends start getting up on the kitchen and sitting there and dancing and we've seen all sorts of stuff and um, we've never had an issue with it. So we've gone back to uh, one of those things that, you know, like I said, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. This is a, a fair job. This takes a few hours to complete. Uh, you want to be handy with the tools if you're going to complete a job like this. Uh, so the kitchen retrofit, probably a big one, something that will take a little bit of time to do. We'd love you guys to get this one here done at either HQ or the Las Vegas store, or actually if you're down south, uh, TJM in Adelaide, uh, if you see the team down at TJM Adelaide, they're going to ha uh, handle all of the Southern Australian customers for us, uh, but we can ship this one out as well. And uh, if you have any issues, you can talk through the customer care team on, on how to install this one. Another one that I want to show you guys through is um, another one in the, um, in the search of really, really nailing, uh, keeping dust out of the trailer. Um, this is a really good one. Uh, this is actually serves two purposes. I'll just pop this little, a little bit. We don't need to open the trailer all the way up. And I'll just run you through what we've done here to help the seals really achieve. And this applies to, look, all of these changes that I'm showing you through, these apply to the entire range. If the upgrade is available to that uh, specific model, then it's available um, to all of those customers and we'll be rolling out. You can see on the top here, we fitted a stainless steel wear plate. Now, because of the way that the Patriots are manufactured, we do get little deviations between the sheet metal, the sections of the sheet metal and the way that the body's constructed. We do use uh, adhesive. We use a Sikaflex or a silicon as a sealant um, to keep any water or dust out of the top of the trailer. But what we're seeing is some little variations when the rubber seal comes down and especially if a seal gets pinched or if it touches a rivet head over a very, very, very long period of time, it'll start wearing out the rubber and eventually the rubber, the big rubber seals will deform. So what we've done is we've taken away completely the opportunity for that to happen and we've given them a very solid stainless steel surface, which is 100% rub resistant. We are seeing also in extreme cases that the rubber seal will be wearing through the powder coat on the top of the trailer, which is not an issue for corrosion at all because all of the bodies are aluminium. Aesthetically, it doesn't look nice, right? It's like having a scratch on the bonnet of your car. And, and I agree, I'm that person as well. I don't like, I like all of my stuff to, to look really nice. So from an aesthetic point of view, it ensures that you're not gonna get any rubbing or any scratching on the paintwork around the top of the trailer. But again, the primary function is to ensure that that rubber seal has an extremely flat level surface to mate on when the lid closes. Another one that we see, and we see it a fair bit, just uh, be very conscious of canvas uh, coming out over your seals when your lid's down. It's a visual thing, guys, and that's something that I do. I have a, a, a motion that I do every time I get into my car. And again, I think people have heard me say this in other videos. Before I get into my car, even if I've pulled up just for fuel, gone in and paid for fuel, I'll always do a lap around my trailer and just consciously just have a look at everything. I'll check that the DO35 cap is on. If the cap is on, then I know the trailer is locked in. I'll just quickly look at the chains and make sure a bolt hasn't come out. And then I'll look at wheel studs, make sure that there's nothing kind of rotated. I'll just look at all of my doors, but I'll also look at the lid, whether I'm towing an X3 or an X1, or even I've got a rooftop tent mounted on the top of one of my vehicles and make sure that there's no canvas just spilling out the side. Because if the canvas is spilling out the side of the lid, your rubber seal is sitting on top of the canvas. You, then you're opening holes for dust ingress once again. So that's another, another real uh, trick to anybody that has canvas on anything. If you can see canvas coming out the side of your product, you have a dust ingress problem. You've got to get it tucked in and allow the seals uh, to do the right job. The biggest change that we've rolled out, and this is one that's been, been keeping me up at night, um, I'm gonna be really, really honest here and say that we have had probably just on a handful, there's probably five claims logged now of rear doors opening on the X1 only. It, it's not a problem that's happening on the X3. We've done so much work uh, with our latch supplier, which is a German company, European products. And this is one that's been keeping me up at night. 
We have done cyclic vibration testing on cycles that have that gone through some G-forces that, that are unheard of, that a trailer will never ever be subjected to. And we cannot reproduce this issue uh, in real life. But what we have found through all of the engineering and all the studies and all the testing that we're doing, what we have found, and even if we go back to the real early de days of Gen 1, behind the axle on a Patriot camper trailer, the resonance that's being caused of the feedback through the chassis is, uh, is quite intense, it's quite severe. And we've engineered that out over the years and we engineered that out right from day one. So any existing uh, customers, uh, don't be concerned about that. But what we have found is that resonance is now working its way somehow into the rear latches and it's causing the rear latches to prematurely um, wear out. A latch will let go. Once one lets go, the second one is wearing the whole brunt of the force of that whole back door. Like I said, we've had logged about five or maybe even six cases, which equates to about 2% of the total X1s that are out there in the Gen 2 range. It's, a, it's quite a small number, uh, but it is a big problem and we have solved it. So if you can see in the back door, the way I've, I've explained it, uh, even to the sales team here at Patriot Campers, if you watch a house being built and you see a frame go up on a house and they put the plywood over particular walls, that's bracing. And what that bracing does is it braces the structure of the frame of the house or a portal frame building specifically. If you see in a factory, you see big cross ties and it stops the building from doing this. That's what we've done with the rear door. Very simply by adding in some nylon strips into the side, which was something that we learnt through PCOR. We did have exactly this issue with the PCOR canopies in the early days. So we've gone and fitted that in and what that does is it turns the back door into an actual brace. So it means that the striker plate inside of the latch, it can't vibrate from side to side or it can't vibrate to the extent that we've seen it doing. Secondary to that, we've also put on an additional pair of latches on the top and they're doing two things. Their primary function is to assist with the bracing. So they're bracing the door vertically. Again, if the body of the camper trailer is sitting like this and the door in front is doing that, that's the motion that I'm talking about. So now it's braced that door. Its secondary function is to ensure if a latch was to ever fail for any reason, that door cannot come undone. It's impossible for it to come undone. It's a secondary function. And that's also something that we fitted on the brand new ST5. The brand new ST5 with the rear door has exactly the same system. So really high quality latches. Uh, once again, the dust caps that I mentioned earlier. Open the rear door. You've got the little push stickers in there uh, and you can see the door still functions the same. Again, this is a very, very simple retrofit. Uh, actually, these are all the retrofit kits. I might run you through the, the boxes in just a second. Uh, they come with a drill template. You drill a couple of holes, pop rivet in the tangs into, uh, into the body and obviously into the latch. And same with the, um, with the, the braces on the side. And uh, that problem is now resolved. All right, coming into the back, uh, just like we noted before, I actually didn't know, but what the team have done is they've put all these retrofit kits uh, in here for me. And I might just, I might give you a quick run through. So these are all the kits that I just spoke about. Um, let me open this one up and I'll run you through how you'll kind of receive the kits if you decide uh, that you want to fit these yourself. So this is how you'll receive the kit. So you'll see that there's instruction manual in here. I might open this, I'll get the guys to reseal it. Um, just to run everyone through real briefly. But you can see in here your kit contents. Um, here's the materials um, that the kit requ uh, requires. Here are the tools um, that you'll need to do this install. So you need to have a look. Fundamentally, a couple of drill bits, uh, a drill and a pop rivet gun will get you through all of these retrofit kits. So we've tried to make them uh, as easy install as possible for everybody. And then step by step, I won't go through the whole thing, but step by step guide with photos on how to fit them all together. And like I said, drill templates, depending on which variation, which model of Gen 2 that you have, um, you cut out the drill templates with a pair of scissors, line them up into the corners, mark your holes. Um, very, very, very simple. And we've tried to ensure that it's simple for all of our customers and obviously um, the dealers as well. So, bit of a state of play on where Patriot Campers is at at the moment. I feel like we're more focused than even we were in the early days in providing the experience um, that we provide.
you know, the market is getting more competitive. You know, there is a lot more overseas product coming over, coming in, and we want to ensure that our customers get the value in the investment that they put behind us and put behind our brand and ensure that we keep the dollars here in Australia. And we continue to build a future for all of our employees, all of the future uh, generations and keep Australian manufacturing alive um, by taking things to the next level uh, for all of our customers. So if you're looking at buying a Gen 2 uh, Patriot Camper, all of this will be included. And as of now, first ever pre-model year release that the company has ever done. This is the first time that we've been ahead of schedule on releasing uh, a new model. They are rolling off the production light right now. And for all the customers that might have experienced some frustration from the innovations and the developments um, that you've seen here today, and I can guarantee you this won't be the end of it. I guarantee you that uh, Patriot Campers will continue to do what Patriot Campers does and we will continue to refine and we will continue to focus on continuous improvements. Um, but that's, that's innovation and that's, that's progress. You know, that's the progress that the company has always been about. This doesn't mean that we will consistently for the rest of the term, every time we make an upgrade, send them out for free. Um, what this does mean is this is kind of, I suppose, an admittance that we got a couple of things, maybe not 100% right. I'm not gonna say we got any of this wrong because we did put the effort in or did put the testing in. I still have my original trailers from those marketing videos that everybody's saying. I think for me, it's a little bit, it's different because at the end of the day, it's my baby. I understand how it works and what's gonna stop it from working. So maybe I'm a little bit, I do a little bit more behind the scenes than a customer would. So this is really about making the product more user friendly. That's what these changes are, are really all about. And once again, I feel like that we have a duty of care to the people that made the early investment into Gen 2, um, that we deliver what's on the box with the Patriot Camper and we want you guys to have the best experience. So it'll be these changes that will be available to existing Gen 2 owners. They will be obviously installed on all the new trailers, as well as all of the other changes that we've made for MY25, which will come out down the track uh, in some of the marketing material. Feel free to make a comment on this video, but if you have some really constructive feedback as an existing owner, please use the customer inquiry form on the website. That ensures, if you go to patriotcampers.com or patriotcampers.com.au, if you go to the customer inquiry there, if you have a warranty claim, lodge it there, but if you have feedback, please lodge it in there, put it in there, because that'll ensure that all those buckets that I spoke about earlier on, when we hear the same sort of responses, that it forces us to make those changes and prioritize the changes to continuously improve the product. You go back from Gen 1 number one to the X1 that I've just showed you through now in 10 years, what we've achieved uh, as a brand from a design perspective and functionality perspective is, is insane. You know, we've completely reinvented the wheel um, when it comes to the Patriot Campers brand. So with that feedback from the customers, that's how we continue uh, to do it. So jump on the website, lodge your inquiry there. If you wanna have a look at any of the Gen 2s, even the ST5, by the time you guys see this, we'll have the, uh, the ST5 will be available uh, in Las Vegas uh, for viewing. And very, very shortly, we're gonna have uh, the, the full, the first actual production unit is gonna be arriving into the showroom here at Patriot HQ, but uh, check with the sales team. Hope you've enjoyed uh, this, uh, the development, it's happening, the, you know, all, all systems are firing here at Patriot Campers and we're back in a position um, that we've always wanted the business to be in. And I think it's showing from the improvement on, uh, on, on where the track that we're heading once again. Uh, we'll see you at a campsite real soon or hopefully in one of the Patriot Campus showrooms.